Well, guys, how you doing? I want to welcome everybody uh, to the Blab tonight. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about accountability uh, and also about strengths and why strengths are so important and, and you playing within your strengths. So uh, really excited to be doing this Blab tonight. Uh, I have a, uh, a very uh, great friend of mine, uh, Kelly Joe McNeemer, on with us tonight. And, and uh, you know, Kelly Joe uh, basically has uh, really helped me develop a, a lot of the content and a lot of the material that uh, I have the opportunity to, to travel around the country and work with other people and kind of uh, teach them. And, and uh, she was instrumental in helping my team find their strengths uh, and, and why it was so important to stay within our strengths and play within our strengths. Uh, and I really wanted to bring her on tonight to talk to us a little bit about uh, not only why strengths are important, but how you can use strengths and holding yourself accountable for growing your business and things that actually happen and take place. Um, you know, I, looking at, at Kelly Joe and all that she's done, uh, you know, her, uh, she's been involved so much at West Virginia University and, and uh, helping them develop resources and building programs uh, and meaningful partnerships with different partners uh, in, in uh, uh, different departments within the university. Uh, the West Virginia, uh, West Virginia University uh, Leadership Academy, uh, she's now doing some work with uh, Gallup Strength. And KJ, I'm getting just a little bit of feedback again. We might just want to turn that down just a little bit if we could. Um, but, you know, Kelly realizes that as you continue to grow, uh, you, you need to continue to uh, work within your strengths. And, and you always want to uh, make sure that you're going to be the person that's constantly getting better and better at your game. So uh, really wanted to bring her in tonight, talk to us a little bit about uh, strengths again. And, uh, you know, I'm going to start it off, KJ, with a question for you. So, uh what do your strengths mean to you? Tell me a little bit about what your strengths mean to you. Well, I know that uh, usually we hear that as a, an interview question, you know, tell me about your strengths. And people, you know, love to talk about what they think they might be. Um, you know, uh, I, I went to Marietta and, and got my leadership minor. And, you know, we used to always talk about as a leader, you got to focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses, asset-based development. And, uh, I really love this assessment that Gallup has, uh, whether it's through StrengthsFinder 2.0 or Strengths-Based Leadership, to help me get the language around uh, what my strengths mean, um, you know, to complete the assessment and then say, you know, this is really how I naturally think, feel, ultimately choose to behave. Um, you know, I can do a lot of things, but this is going to be my go-to. Um, so for me, you know, when I look at my top five, you know, it says one of mine is communication. Well, no doubt, if you know me, I love words um, and have really practiced my knowledge and, and you know, gained some knowledge and practiced my skills over the years in, you know, uh, finding the right words and packaging that and putting that out to others. Um, I also have a strength in responsibility. So if I take something on, then I'll commit to getting it done. Uh, I have a strength in uh, belief. You know, I have, um, have some core values that really steer me or drive me. Um, and then also I have a strength in um, positivity. So, you know, it, it's nice to look at the language behind the Gallup assessment that says, you know, what does positivity mean and, and how do you apply that to your work uh, or how do you apply that even to your personal relationships? Um, so, you know, uh, being able to to say to people, well, what are your strengths? Uh, especially when I sit in an interview and, and one of my top five strengths is woo. And to be able to say to somebody, well, you know, you're going to want to send me your most difficult customers because I might have to tell them no, but I'm going to find a way to tell them so that they walk out happy or satisfied because I, I get, I'm driven by, you know, winning them over. Um, so that, that helps me to, to explain to people who I am and how that can be beneficial in either my professional, professional or personal role. Hey, yeah. KJ, just uh, tell us a little bit more about that. What is a wooer? <laughs> you know, people on the line might not understand what a wooer really is. Yeah. It's a great way you said that, though. You're going to you're gonna let that person down easy and at the same time make them feel good about themselves. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about wooing. So I love that you, you know, said I saw your kind of smile when I said I've got woo because I think that's one of your top five, too, right? Well, Wu's not one of mine. Wu's actually one of one of my team members' okay. top five, okay. and we kind of joke about that because I'm not really a wooer. So, well, you know, uh, a woo is somebody that literally it's an acronym for winning others over, 
So, you know, these are the people that you want up front and personal with your connecting with your customers. Um, you know, so they're going to make sure that everybody's having a good time, that, you know, um, people are, are happy about the experience. Um, and like I said, you know, even if you have to tell somebody no, um, you're going to kind of gear, guide them and, and gear them towards a direction that makes them walk out and, and be like, well, that, that was great. Um, you know, so they're not going to feel disappointed or, or frustrated. They're going to really appreciate that experience they get when they're, when they're working with somebody with Woo. Now, at the same time, I also have to be very mindful that, you know, so you, you've got the way I naturally think, feel, ultimately will choose to behave. Um, at the same time, I need to be mindful of how that could be perceived by others. You know, sometimes people will look at a Woo and say, well, is she really being genuine? You know, is she, is she just giving me the show? Um, so, you know, and it also depends on, you know, your mix of your other strengths, your other top five strengths and, and how they uh, relate together. Uh, so it's, it's really interesting to just kind of look at that whole package, uh, you know, being that I have belief as part of my top five, um, you know, some people may perceive it as being uh, disingenuine or, or not authentic. Um, but I really do have a core value that the best thing that you can give somebody else is your time and your talent, you know? So yeah. by really looking at them in the eye and, and talking to them, you know, I know you all, we, we, we talk about a, a common frame where we say heart to heart, you know, knee to knee, heart to heart, you know, really connecting with that person. Um, so it's not, disingenuous you know I, I really do want to make sure that they're having a great experience when they spend time with me yeah and and you know talking tonight because we have doctors on the line talking about their office and, and that yes. front desk person that first engagement with the public that's the kind of trait that you want with that that initial contact with whether it's a doctor's office or whatever type of business you want that person that 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 you 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 establish that common ground or that rapport as quickly as possible, and a wooer uh, can really do that. Absolutely, I just gave you props for that. Now it is interesting to me, you know, we can all get to the end goal depending on what our strengths are, you know. So you've got a couple other strengths that you know really can make some solid connections if you're working in that front desk role, um, but. There are just a few of us that will get there a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, a little bit, um, what, what, what's that trifecta from the business world? Uh, faster, quicker, better. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. I, I love to turn on my woo when I'm with other people, whether that be in the, yeah, in the front yeah. roll staff or uh, role or, you know, being uh, leading a session. So just really thinking about how to put your strengths to use in whatever role you play within an organization. Well, you know, that, that brings up a great question. My next question to you is, why is it important to know your strengths then? Right. So that's what I said to you, that trifecta of, of faster, cheaper, better. Um, yeah. We can all get to the end goal. You know, I don't want to use okay. my strengths and say, well, you know, strategic isn't in my top five. I can't be strategic because I can. Just the way I go about getting to that strategy, I got to talk to other people. I know that, you know, so... Um, knowing who I am helps me get to the end goal faster, cheaper, better. Uh, I don't more, necessarily more. waste time going, well, let me try the way you're telling me to do it, or let me try the way you're telling me to do it. I know how to get there, and, and I can That's get awesome. there based on who I am. I don't have to fill out the, that leadership, leadership model and say, well, I've got to be this person over here to be successful. You know, knowing your strengths based on that Gallup assessment really helps you to think about who am I and how can I do the job in a way that works for me. Um, so yeah. really looking at yeah. some of those other leaders and saying, you know, that's awesome that they did it that way, but this is how I need to do it to be successful. Yeah. You know, that, that brings up a great point because as an accountability coach, I work with offices all around the country. Yes. And, and oftentimes I'll get, uh, you know, business people that say, well, just give me the scripts. Tell me how you do it. I'll just do it like you do it. And I say, no, that's not what it's about. It's about becoming the best you that you can be. Absolutely. So let's figure out what, you know, figure out what your strengths are 
and then let's work within those parameters to, to make this your own or to make this product your own. You know, I think, um, oh my goodness, I can't remember who said that quote, but it was, uh, it might've been Joyce Myers that said, uh, God will help you become anything, right? But he's not going to help you become somebody exactly. else. Exactly. You got to be a lot so, more of you, yeah. who you are, right? right. Um, there exactly. is a quote in this book in Strengths Fighters 2.0 uh, from Gallup where they say, you know, you cannot be anything you want to be, but you can be a lot more of who you already are. And I love that. Right. You know, so many people try so hard to be somebody else and, and really work at, well, what was their education? What was what's their knowledge? What their experiences? But the truth is that no matter how much I study, I'm not going to know everything you know. And and no how no matter how hard I work, I'm not going to have the same level of talent or, or same skills that you have. Now I have all 34 talents based on the Gallup Web Assessment, but because of my knowledge and because of my skills, I'm going to have my top five. Right. So there are some right. things that you and I will will know and do that's similar, but the way we're driven, the way we naturally think, feel, and ultimately behave based on our talents really helps develop that into a strength. And a strength as defined by Gallup is um, the ability to do something consistently, repeatedly, happily, and successfully to near perfect performance. So, you know, think about how much knowledge you need to gain over time or how, how much skills, you know, your skills that you need to practice over time so that you can really develop your talents into a strength. Uh, near perfect performance. Takes a lot. Yeah, a tremendous amount. And you don't want to spend you know, all that, you know, it's not like we have unlimited amounts of time in the world. So, you know, with the, with the limited amount of time you have, put it to the very best use that you possibly can. And spend your time focused yeah. on the way you naturally think, feel, and ultimately behave. Yeah, awesome. Hey, KJ, I just saw Luke Nessler yes. from uh, Impact Marketing jump in. And I know he has a group uh, uh, that is wanting to understand what Blab is. And we're going to have, I think, our first Blab flash here. So I'm going to see if uh, Luke can jump in here and and uh, kind of show everybody what we're talking about with Blab. This is going to be really cool if we can get this to work. Awesome. So, so uh there we go. Hey, Luke, how we doing? Hey, guys. It's kind of hard to hear. I won't keep awesome. on for I know it's loud. Thanks for letting us hop in real awesome. quick. Yeah, you bet, buddy. So tell us, uh, you know, I was just telling the group here a little bit about what you're doing with Impact. Oh, he jumped off, guys. So must be bad internet connection. But Luke is with Impact Marketing, and, and what Luke does is uh, helps people become more efficient at their social media and how to connect with others. Uh, so... Anyway, he has a group downstairs. I'm actually doing this live from a friend of mine's restaurant uh, where he's hosting an event. I just spoke downstairs uh, 20 minutes or so ago, and then I came up here to jump on the blab. Uh, but but it was cool that they could jump in there for a second. Yes. You know, one of the things I always heard, KJ, was figure out what your weaknesses are and work on your weaknesses. That made no sense to me at all. And when we worked with you, it, you, you really brought that uh, into a clear understanding for me. If I understand my strengths... And I realized that I can only go so far by myself yeah. that I have to form alliances and I have to form people on a team that will help me get to that next level. That it made more sense to me to play them. I'll have maybe a bit of each one of those. Let's play within our strengths and then hire our weaknesses so that we can create a team that's more uh, effective at getting the job done. Would you agree no, with that? I think, it's, uh, I think it's really important, first of all, to definitely be aware of your strengths and who you are. And then as you continue over time to, to develop and apply your strengths, to definitely work in partnership or in relationship with others. You know, to think about, you know, not having all 34 uh, strengths necessarily represented in your team, um, but Gallup went on to do some more research in strengths-based leadership where they looked at, you know, the four domains of a successful team. You gotta have people that execute, who get the job done, right? And you got to have your strategic thinkers right. who come up with those brilliant ideas. You got to have the influencers who bring others in, and you know, and uh, you got to definitely also have the relationship builders, um, the people that are are helping people work together. You know, and when you think about those four domains being part of a successful team, you know, 
knowing who you are and knowing who the people that you work with are and how you all work to develop and apply your strengths is going to ultimately save your team time. Uh, it's going to help your team yeah. reach their goals. Uh, and they're going to do it with a level of both achievement and enjoyment because they're going to be working from a place where what they're doing is their best, right? It, it's, it comes natural to them. Yeah, right. Um, so they're going right. to say, yeah, I want to be part of that. I want to do that. Um, so, you know, and that's why I said right. it's, it's really important to know who you are so you can work in relationship with others. Absolutely. Well, you know, you bring up a great point there that I want to ask you about. Um, when you were talking about the four different domains, the executing, the influencing, of course, relationship building and then strategic planning. When you when, like when I look at my five strengths, achiever, focus. Um, you know, I'm an activator. I'm, I'm competitive. Competition's a big one. A strategic is big for me. How important is it that that you see those strengths show up? Maybe one in each one of those categories, or two in you know. In other words, if you're dominant in executing only, is that a hindrance? For Absolutely you? not. Um, you know, uh, okay. you still. You know, that's what I said. When you say hindrance, I really had to think about that because, you know. You definitely want to break that paradigm where you say, be this, do this, you know, let's work on your weaknesses. You know, that's not what positive psychology is all about. That's not what the Gallup Strengths Assessment is all about. It's about saying, who are you? What's your knowledge? What's your skill? How do you naturally think, feel, ultimately behave? And, and how do we spend a lot more time doing that, investing in that? Um, so that, you know, if you are all five in execution, great. You are someone I can rely on to get things done. And I know that. If you're all, if you've got two in strategic thinking, two in influencing, and, and one in relationship building, great. You know, it really is not about saying, here's who you need to be as a leader and checking it off the list. It's really about saying, who are you? What are you? What do you okay. know? What, what can you do? And how can we use that to help elevate you as a leader? I see that. I see that. Now, let me ask you a question on that one then. As a, as a business owner and a CEO of your business, if like one of your strengths being communication, if I had a project that, uh, let's say, required, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a, a super hands-on communication type skill, and you're on my team, would I be better suited to ask you to participate in that project? Uh, better, may, let's say, than maybe someone that is more like uh, empathetic or, uh, uh, um, you know, has And it really does depend like on the task. Um, you know, I know, okay. I know a lot of people who are in a, a strategic communications role, you know, and I was thinking about some of Luke's work, not knowing his five and not wanting mm -hmm. to try to guess or assume, but it have, have been working with people in that role before they said, well, communication isn't one of my top five. I'm like, but that doesn't mean that you don't know how to communicate. The way you go about right. getting okay. there is different than the way I go about getting there. So for me, I like words. So, you know, it, yes. it'd be great for me to form a relationship with somebody who's strategic and we can develop a newsletter together, right? But at the same yeah. time, I need to form a relationship with somebody because if not, I'm going to put a lot of words out there, you know, <laughs> and you've seen me do that before. Uh, sometimes it's about, yeah, I was, you know, it, that's so funny because I was thinking of some of the content that we've created together. Here I am saying, here's what we got to do. Boom, boom, boom. And you, you always, it's funny. You bring me back on track. You say, I don't really think you want to say it that way. Maybe you ought to try these words. Exactly. And that's why I said it's always it's a, good so I see what you mean. to know who you're working with. Yeah. Yeah. So I could have communicated the message, but perhaps the message wouldn't be as well received as someone that would, you know, be better with or more fluent. With so words. we can both get so, to the end goal, right? You can put a message out right, there. Exactly. Just the way we go about getting yeah. there is very different for each of us. And that's why I said, you know, once you know who you are, once you know who I am, then you just have to really think about, you know, being a leader isn't about being alone. It's not about standing on top of, of the mountain by yourself. It's about working with other people and bringing them up the mountain with you. It's about holding hands and saying, how do we all get to the top of the mountain and bring other people with us? And so, you know, really 
just being considerate of that whole chain of people that you're with, um, you know, and saying, well, how can you help us get to the top? How can you help us get to the top? <laughs> and, you know, you're going to get there. And that's why I said, I, I really think about this as a leadership assessment, because when you know who you are and you know who the people that you're working with, who they are, then you know when to be in front, when to be beside and when to be behind. You know, you, you know that timing and, and then you can work in partnership. You can work in a relationship with some reciprocity that's built on trust that uh, has a sense of hope and compassion and stability. Um, you know, so it's not only just being aware of your strengths, but then it's really about, well, how do I develop and apply my strengths in partnership with others, in relationship with others? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, definitely so. So, you know, one of the things we're talking about tonight, and, and I did something on purpose, and I'm amazed no one's commented on it yet because I was trying to show analytical is not a big strength of mine. So I actually typed the word strengths wrong to see if someone would say, hey, there's a typo in this. So I could tell everybody, you know, all the typos and everything on here, there's no extra charge for it. Nice. Free. We include those in the lab. So. But it's funny, no one's called us out on that and, yet. And accountability. I, I guess no one's point, held you accountable for your mistake. You, that, that's my point. All right. So that brings us into our next topic, which is really accountability. And so I guess what I'm asking there is, in, in, uh, in knowing your strengths, how can you use your strengths uh, to increase your accountability? And that's where I think I started to lead into working in partnership with others, right? Um, so it is great to have that sense of awareness. And, um, you know, and that's what I said, accountability is also a word when I think about reciprocity and working in partnership. So if I say to you, yes, I will get that task done, you have to trust me when I say that, right? Yeah, and I right. also okay. need to work in, in reciprocity with you that if something happens, I can come to you and you would have enough compassion that as we talk through the issues, you know, you're not going to bite my head off. You're going to say, well, how do we adjust? Okay. So, you know, and that's what I said, really that, that um, cycle of, of awareness, application, development, and relationship or partnership. Um, you know, that's how you really hold that accountability, um, you know, by doing things together. Um, you know, by saying, here's the idea. How are we going to bring people along to get it done? How are we going to, you know, include people in to keep people with us? How are we going to, you know, find other partners or, or um, influence people, you know, based on what we're finding from our work together? Right. You know, in, in, in accountability, you know, accountability is one of those things. I think for all of us to be successful, we have to have someone accountability partner yes. to hold us there. You know, whether it's in a personal relationship, you know, or whether it's in a business relationship or if you're on a team, you're a team member playing basketball or football or whatever. The, the more we hold one another accountable, the closer we'll get to achieving those goals or, and the quicker, as you talked about before, the faster we'll be able to get to that point. Um, and so strengths, again, if, if we if, if each if we know each of those strengths and as a team, you know, one of the things that was powerful for us was not only knowing my strengths, but knowing the strengths of those on yes. my group, right? And so, and, and I've, you know, my wife, Lisa, and I've been able to even take this and use it to see our relationship become better. Because sometimes the way I'll say things is not necessarily the way she hears it and yeah. vice versa, yeah. you know? And so I've got to stop sometimes and think back, okay, maybe there's a better way I can phrase this or maybe there's a better way I can communicate the message I'm trying to get out there. So, uh, and, and therefore we can hold each other more accountable to, to whatever that end goal well, is, or is we're trying to. And I think when goal. you're talking about accountability, I'm hearing, uh, you know, a couple of different words in there. Um, you know, I'm definitely hearing a sense of that, that concept of partnership, trust, hope, compassion, and stability, you know, reciprocity, um, which they talk a lot about in uh, strengths-based leadership, which I know you got a copy of that there. But, you know, as a leader, yes, it's yes. not about building trust with you based on my strengths. As a leader, it's about knowing who you are and building trust with you based on your strengths so that we can work in better accountability together. 
It's about learning your language. It's about, you know, considering how you think, feel, and will ultimately choose to behave. You know, for example, with competition, you know, I know sometimes if I say, well, let's see how fast we can get this presentation done. You know, it, it kicks you into mode. You're like, okay, it's a game. Right. Let's go. Yeah, you know? right, 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 right. So, yeah. but that's not my stuff. That's not, competition not one of my top five. But right. to work in partnership with you, to work in relationship with you, I need to be thoughtful of who you are. Um, you know, to work in better accountability with you, you know, to say, these are things that we committed to doing. Let's get them done based on who you are, not based on who I am. Um, so, you know, yeah. I think accountability is about, um, you know, once you make a commitment, you know, achieving those goals together. Um, but accountability is also about that um, partnership or enjoyment in the process of getting there. And about considering the people that you're working with and how they go about getting there and not just it being all about you right you have to really be mindful right. of well, how do I work with this person to achieve the task yeah that makes sense yeah it's a great way of putting that it. It makes total sense and you definitely do need to but have you know, an accountability uh, partner when you when you mentioned that I thought yes and, and what an awesome opportunity, as you said, between you and your wife, Lisa. You don't have the same strengths. You know, Gallup did some research, and what they found was strong teams are actually, you know, this, this wonderful mix of diverse strengths. So when you think about having an accountability partner, think about conscientiously, mindfully choosing someone different than you. You know, so that you guys can develop, apply, and work in partnership together. Wow. Mind blowing. So what you're telling me is, so if you're on, if you guys are on this blab or listening right to this recording, before you start dating who you think's that perfect individual, they should take strength finders, and you should really find out, right? Hey, I, I'm gonna give two thumbs up to that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Huh? Let me see your strength finder at, at, at like a speed dating event. You'll find your strength finders report before I really want to sit down and engage in Absolutely. a conversation with you. <laughs> Hey, listen, we have some people in, and, and guys, I want you to know on the panel on the right-hand side, if you have a question for uh, KJ or, or myself, just type the question in. Uh, or if you want to jump in, we have an open seat. Just click on the open seat, and we'll definitely let you into the discussion here. But I'd love to have some interaction on uh, your thoughts on strength and your thoughts on accountability or the things that are working for you, the things that, uh, you know, even in your practice or your personal life, things that are working and, and things that you have uh, – you know, you or your team has held each other accountable for and the changes that you've seen here in the last, uh, um, you know, few weeks here or so. So if you have any of those questions or anything, please type them in the sidebar. We'll be happy to, to address them and an, uh, answer them for you. Uh, KJ, we talked a little uh, uh, tremendous information. I really appreciate that about strengths and how we use strengths and everything. But for someone that doesn't really know, um, so so how do you take this analysis? Where, how do you figure out what your five strengths are? What's the next step that they, they can do? So Gallup uh, offers a ton of resources. Um, you know, they have the Gallup Strength Center, so you can go online right now and, and get a code for the assessment. Uh, it's about $15. You can go on to Amazon, go into Barnes & Noble. You know, I, I'd love to spend some time at a good bookstore. Go pick up StrengthsFinder 2.0 or, or go pick up uh, Strengths-Based Leadership. You know, right now, um, yeah. it's always the same assessment with them. Um, just the resources you get are very different through uh, each resource that Gallup pushes out. Uh, they also have a, an amazing department at Gallup that's really looking at how to use this information with educational institutions uh, in both K-12 and also uh, college campuses, about 600 college campuses across the country right now. Uh, really working with young people to say, what are your strengths? And, and knowing how to answer that. And then trying to figure out how to work in partnership with others. Uh, you know, like I said, with that, not only the domains, the, tr you know, uh, relationship building, influencing, strategic thinking, and, and executing, but also in terms of working in reciprocity with trust, hope, compassion, and stability. Got it. And you were talking about going to a bookstore, picking up books. Um, and I don't have it. Maybe yours does. But 
when they do this, if they pick the book up, there there's actually a uh, test in the back of it. Is that there's correct? a one-time use only code. Oh, I was trying to pick yeah. mine out too. Mine's not in there either. I, I, I don't, oh, here we go. Here we go. Mine's actually tore yeah. out. But it's a, a code that you actually get and then be able to log in and actually take the test so it's part of the book. So so one of the things that that you could do as an entrepreneur is uh, you know buy, perhaps purchase a couple of these books for your yeah. team. What a great way for you know to say hey, we're going to go through this as a team. Maybe maybe you're going to have strength based selling for someone that's you know like at the retail point, you're going to have leadership maybe for the person that's running the show. Yeah. Maybe even be 20, maybe strength based 20. And then have everyone take it together. Right. And then find out what what those results are. They send you a nice report um, and, and then you're able to analyze that report and see what's going on. And I think it's um, definitely, you know, important to have a conversation about your report. You know, that's how you, you you raise that awareness. You say, well, what out of your report, what words really stood out for you? Um, you know, as you think about what achiever means to you, you know, as you think about at how Gallup defines, you know, um, competition. But let's talk about your other four. So what does competition mean to you? Um, you know. Okay. So, so my next question is this. In working with Gallup, uh, I know it, it, the benefit a team would see in, in working with someone like yourself yeah. as, as a, a, an, an individual or a coach that could evaluate what those strengths are as a team and then come up with a game plan. How can we use these things as a team to make our particular process better? Is that something people could do? Absolutely. Um, you know, I know with the Blab, people are located all over the place. Um, you know, Gallup has a, a lot of resources. Uh, one of them is uh, Gallup Coaches. Uh, and, and we're here to help facilitate uh, conversations and, and really work with people. And, you know, some Gallup coaches work with individuals. Uh, you know, I kind of have a preference. I really like to work with leaders and, and their teams and, and think about how we all work together to get to the end goals. Um, you know, think about what your goals are and, and how you're using your strengths to get there. Um, and I know that was something I, I worked on with your team, you know, not only to be aware of what your top five strengths were, but to really um, spend some time looking at their Gallup-based research, you know, what does it mean to work from a place of strengths? You know, and like I said, you know, I remember in the session where you were like, oh, wait, everybody always says work on my weaknesses. And I was like, they're wrong. <laughs> you know, and here's all the Gallup research that says they're wrong. Uh, but then also, you know, really just spending some time having a conversation with somebody else where you feel like you're heard, where you say, you know, these are my strengths. This is what it means to me. This is how I use them in my professional role. Um, this is why it's important for me. Like, as somebody who has strong communication, I need you to talk to me. If, if you ignore yeah. me, I'm going to feel like something's wrong in our relationship. If you don't spend a few minutes, you know, having a conversation with me, I'm going to be like, what's up? Right? Because words are so important to me. So to be able to, to connect with people on that level and say, you know, hey, it's nothing personal. This is just the way I operate. You know, uh, and not to make an excuse about it, but then to say, well, how do we work better together? Because this is who I am and this is who you are. So how do we work better together so that we can, you know, like I said, have that sense of achievement and enjoyment. And, and working with a coach is absolutely a wonderful strategy uh, to help, you know, really elevate your level of awareness and, and working in relationship with each other. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. So, and, and to be a little bit more specific, uh, is there the ability to work with someone like you? I mean, is there an opportunity that, that you know, you could turn around and say, hey, we might uh, we might be able to give people on the line the ability to, to connect with you in a way that you could review those things for them, and at least from an outside perspective, give them some advice on what those strengths Absolutely. may be? Absolutely. Is that a Absolutely. possibility? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, Gallup definitely has uh, a list of coaches. If, if there's anybody here on the blab that's interesting, uh, interested in working with me, just like you did, I'd say get in touch with Dr. Bennett. Uh, he knows how to get a hold of me. <laughs> um, you know, and, and right, it's something right, where definitely. we work in partnership together. Uh, he's, he and I have been involved since the beginning uh, as he's been working with folks across the country and coaching them. And, 
you know, just so impressed with the work that you're doing, Dr. Bennett, and, uh, you know, how you really help people get invested and passionate, you know, helping their, their wild goals come true. What, what's your tagline again? Turning goals into action There you go. Steps. Yeah. Helping you discover yeah. what you're wildly passionate about. Yeah, what's wildly important to you and turning those goals and dreams into specific yeah. action hashtag. steps. So, so you can find us at hashtag G-I-A-S, goals into action nice. steps. Yeah, nice. Definitely so. You know, yeah. so proud of that. We we ha we have our own uh, registered hashtag. Nice. You know, I feel like we've really made it now. <laughs> nice. I like it right there. G I A S. I love it. I love it. There you go. And like I said, you know, if, if, so. if somebody's uh, <laughs> interested in in you know investing in themselves and in their team as you have over the years, uh, they should definitely get in touch with you. You know, there's a lot of resources that you offer through your coaching programs. And one of those additional resources could absolutely be uh, working with their strengths and, and, you know, investing in their team to work with their strengths, too. Awesome. I'm going to put up, uh, KJ, um, our web address uh, on the side. And if you have, uh, like, a LinkedIn or something like that where people could connect with you or even an email if they want to carry on a conversation, that'd be awesome if you could post that. So they can reach us at Dr. It's simple, drjohnbennett.com. And, and, and I encourage you to do that because we have a tremendous amount of free resources on our, our webpage. Our, our idea is always to add value or add content to people that are uh, searching for that. So uh, we try to put some very valuable things not only on the health and wellness side, but on the leadership uh, side Absolutely. also. So I encourage you to really go there and check it out. So. Absolutely. I would say right now just follow yeah. me on Twitter or get a hold of him. <laughs> there you go. So, so on Twitter – uh, I am daily choices. How about handle. that? I am I am daily choices. So, you know, I am daily choices. Uh, that brings us to a whole nother. We have to have a whole nother blab on that because the reality of what you create in your life is really about yes. choices. You know, and and I tell people all the time, if you're not happy with your current reality, then start making some different right. choices because we all make them every day. Um, you know, and and you know, we actually posted something today on one of our uh, social media. Uh, platforms was that you're making choices every day and the, and the choices you're making on a daily basis will help you with tomorrow even if your tomorrow is a yeah. year from now you know it's 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 and, and i think you mentioned that early on it's it's not about rushing to that end goal it's about how do i get there the most efficient way and produce the best product based I on can. who i am right so like what daily right. choices right. am i making every day how am i working with an accountability partner so that i can be a lot more of who i am so that, you know, I know earlier right. you talked about, and, and you'll definitely see my belief coming through, and I know you said it, but so I can be everything that God created me to be, you know, so I can ultimately give my time and talent uh, back to others and, and, you know, really serve my purpose to the best of my ability. That's exactly right. You know, and I just typed in there, it's all about yes. your journey. That's what I tell people all the time. It's your journey. Make the most of your particular journey. What can you get out of your journey? So definitely Absolutely. so. Well, listen, um, I, I want to pay mindful to time on here. We like to kind of keep these to uh, to uh, about 45 minutes and open it up for questions. I'm going to ask one more time if there are any questions. If you guys would like to type them in, uh, you know, I'm sure KJ would be uh, more than willing to answer those um, uh, or myself. And, and I just want to keep you attuned to some of the things that we're doing. We have uh, – <laughs> we have an entire channel that we're going to be doing with uh, the hashtag uh, goals into action steps. And we're going to be doing a biweekly uh, program uh, where we're going to bring you great content like this, interviewing people like yourself, interviewing people in social media, interviewing people uh, in health and wellness industry. So, um, you know, really tune in and kind of follow us on that. And we'll, we'll keep you in tune to some of that as it uh, develops here within the next week. We had Pam, I think Pamela Gomez joined us. Hi, Pam. Uh, we're just kind of wrapping up here. Uh, love to have you uh, jump in if you'd like. we got um, a Natural Roma on here. We've got some other people jumping in. Uh, if you have any questions, we're, we're uh, just to kind of let you know, we're finishing up with uh, Kelly Joe. Kelly Joe's taught us a little bit tonight about strengths and why your strengths are so important and why it's important in uh, holding yourself accountable to things. Uh, so, um, again, Pam, do you, if you want to jump in the seat real quick, be happy to do that. If you have a question, go ahead and type it in there. Love to answer it before we uh, go offline here. So, 
KJ, what's in store for you the rest of the week? Whew. Busy week. <laughs> I was actually just uh, sharing with somebody else. I'll be, uh, I'll literally be traveling uh, to almost all parts of the country next week. It is, it is jam packed. Nice. Uh, and then, you know, always important to spend time with your family uh, and friends. You know, those are definitely things that you need to make sure you spend time doing as you're making your daily choices. Awesome. Well, listen, let's go ahead and wrap up then. It's been a pleasure. KJ, I'd love to have you back on again. Maybe we can dive a little bit deeper into this. Uh, the resources, Strengths-Based Leadership, Strength Finders 2.0, as KJ said. Uh, uh, Roger, you asked a question in the two books that we mentioned. And there are a couple others. This is a great place to start, though. Yes, correct? and, uh, you know, not only does Gallup have um, – Strengths-based selling. I know earlier you were talking a little bit about the health and wellness industry. You know, um, depending on yes. what your personal goals are, your professional goals, you may want to check out well-being from Gallup. You know, how how are you really um, creating that environment for you um, to be successful, considering your well-being? Um, you know, so Gallup has an amazing amount of resources. Just so impressed with the quality that they put out. Uh, and, you know, the additional uh, information that's available to folks who really want to, you know, take some time to invest in themselves, to grow themselves. Uh, and like I said, from an asset-based perspective, this isn't going to be an assessment that says, here's everything that's wrong about you, now we're going to fix it. You know, we're really going right, to focus right. on here's, here's what's right about you and how do we spend more time doing that. Nice. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, listen, All right, guys. Well, listen, we're going to wrap it up. You guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, again, it was a pleasure uh, spending time with you, KJ, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. So thanks again for everything. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.